Hey everyone, Jerry here from Llama Index, and in the third part of this tutorial series on building advanced RAG orchestration, I'll teach you how to build an agentic pipeline from scratch. And so this is an important step towards teaching you how to compose your own agentic orchestration to really leverage the power of LLM reasoning on top of any existing tools that you use, whether that is an existing RAG pipeline uh, or a SQL database tool, as we'll show in the example or really any other function. This is pretty key to making sure that you don't depend on just out of the box, uh, off the shelf modules that libraries like us provide like an out of the box React agent and that you really understand how to really compose your own orchestration um, so that you can customize it, really adapt it to your own use case. So let's get started. So uh, we all are pretty familiar with the existing stack of a RAG pipeline now. You know, you take in a query, feed it through your RAG pipeline, which does retrieval, synthesis, uh, re-ranking, all these fun things, and then you get back a response. And so as we go from RAG to agents, it helps to think about as a progression of what exactly does that mean, right? And one aspect of this is that you can add agentic reasoning at the beginning of a RAG pipeline um, to basically, you know, uh, have a RAG pipeline be a tool within an agent so that the agent can act as a reasoning layer on top of this tool um, to give you additional query understanding. For instance, given a multi-part or complex question, uh, an agentic layer like a React agent can do stuff like chain of thought, step-by-step um, -step reasoning, query planning to break down a complex question into smaller ones that you can then execute against a RAG pipeline. You can also add agentic reasoning pretty much at any step in this process. You can add agents in the middle. For instance, you could have agentic like re-ranking, retrieval. You can have agents towards the end after you get back the result. You can reason about it to see if you want to redo or retry things uh, before you get back a response. The definition of an agent um, hasn't been consolidated yet, but here we're really just saying that an agent is just using an LLM for automated reasoning and tool selection. And we'll go over four different levels of agents in the next slide um, to really show you a progression from very simple agents to more advanced ones. Also an agent um, is uh, that, that uh, can, can have more tools than for instance, just a RAG pipeline, right? Um, an agent can be composed on top of any tools and RAG, uh, for instance, an existing QA pipeline is just one tool that an agent can leverage. Um, agents ideally should be able to actually uh, select what tools they want to use throughout the reasoning process, and then dynamically, you know, reselect and select until they get back, um, or until they solve the task at hand. Here's a, a diagram showing you a progression of simple to advanced agents. On the left side of the spectrum, um, you have a, uh, an agent that is simple, lower cost, and lower latency. And on the right side of the spectrum, you have agents that are more advanced, uh, cost more tokens, and of course are gonna be slower. So the most simple form of an agent really is just something like routing, right? A routing basically using an LLM given a query to decide what downstream module to pick. So it's really just like a multiple choice selection problem. That still is a layer of agentic reasoning because it, level, it adds a level of, um, uses the LLM to actually dynamically reason about what choice to pick given the input question. Some steps beyond that include, you know, um, being able to decompose a question into multiple smaller ones over a subset of tools, includes tool use, so actually being able to infer arguments for tools and being able to use those. Uh, and it also includes more involved agents uh, where we actually get into loops, like React is a classic architecture, uh, which reasons about, uh, which can reason about a question and do tool use in a step-by-step -step manner and maintain conversation history throughout uh, along the way. There's also more agent papers coming out these days. And a lot of latest research focuses on dynamic long-term planning and execution, and how do you solve very complex tasks um, in, um, well, right? And, and kind of, you're able to plan ahead instead of just reasoning step-by-step. -step. So in this slide, we show you four levels of agents. Uh, the first level is tool use, which is more on the left side of that spectrum of something that's very simple, not super complicated, um, but it's just a matter of given a query, the agent can decide what tool to pick and the arguments to pick it with. Um, and then that tool is selected, it's run, and the response is given back. So that's a very simple example of an agent. And actually routing falls within this category. 
because routing really is just tool selection across a set of choices. And you pick those choices and you return the results. Uh, second step is, you know, independent of tool use, you can also define an agent as having some sort of reasoning loop with uh, conversation memory. So if you have like a conversational um, uh, chatbot where you not only uh, input like a one-off query, but you actually have a conversation over time, you notice that it actually maintains the state of the earlier conversation. And so instead of just having a DAG where given an input, you get back an output, having it persist state over time so it actually loops, you know, um, uh, so that there's a, a, a loop from, from the output back to the memory module uh, for the next conversation. Um, this is an example of something that is also agentic. Three is, of course, you combine the two. So you combine tool use with some sort of reasoning loop and memory. Um, and so given a, given a user input, um, you might want to, uh, one, select the set of tools to use, and then actually you kind of want to go back and see if the task has been solved, right? And if, if it hasn't been solved, you want to continue doing some light reasoning uh, tool use um, until you actually you know, uh, store enough stuff in the memory, in the conversation history, to feel confident that you have the right response. And so this is something that basically, this is basically what a React agent is, uh, right? It's, it combines you know, the chain of thought, step-by-step -step reasoning with tool use uh, to try to solve a task at hand. And then number four is what I very informally define as a fancy reasoning loop uh, plus memory plus tool use. It's just a step up from three. And really the main difference is how fancy that reasoning layer is. If three we count as step-by-step -step reasoning, so for instance, React agent is just, you know, um, given the current conversation history, just infer what the next question is. Um, the, the, the next step up is just, uh, instead of just planning the next step, can we actually plan out an entire query plan, right? Like an entire DAG of, of actions to execute in order to achieve the task at hand. Um, and a lot of recent agent papers are actually focused on this. This includes papers like uh, plan and solve or plan and execute. Um, and this also uh, includes papers like the recent LLM compiler paper uh, whose authors we hosted on our webinar. So in the last two videos, um, we showed you how to build query pipelines. And so far, we've mostly used query pipelines to build DAGs. Uh, this means that these DAGs do not have loops in them. Um, the input uh, just flows uh, or uh, the flows from one end of the DAG uh, to the end, from the root node to the leaf nodes. And you get back an output. And of course, like the intermediate steps, the in intermediate modules uh, process the inputs and give back outputs. This captures workflows like prompt chaining, as well as the RAG pipeline, which we showed in the previous videos, um, as well as you know, the simple advanced text to SQL demonstration. This also includes simple agentic reasoning capabilities, such as routing, as well as one-step query decomposition. What this doesn't capture is because there's no loops in the DAG uh, by definition, um, we aren't able to capture some more sophisticated agentic reasoning. So for instance, if you wanted the output to actually flow back to the input, um, and actually run a while loop until the task is complete, you're not able to do that yet. Uh, the next thing that you're not able to do is uh, that we haven't demonstrated is actually being able to maintain state. Because if you have a while loop flowing back through the input, uh, you'll, need, you'll want to have some sort of internal state that's modified over time. And so far, you can think about a query pipeline as stateless. So both of those things will change with um, this video. So in this video, we'll show you how to compose an agentic query pipeline, where you can execute a query pipeline and a loop. Um, this query pipeline um, will, can, will be plugged in to what we call an agent worker. And it's a special type of query pipeline that actually carries state and isn't stateless. And by plugging it into an agent worker, you get a lot of the benefits of the llama index agent abstractions which let you execute a task end by end, uh, end to end or step by step. Um, and of course, this uh, special type of agentic pipeline also maintains mutable state throughout the query pipeline so that once you, you know, loop through it multiple times, the state can actually change. And mutable state includes stuff like conversation history, memory, and other variables that you want to toggle. So without further ado, let's go through a notebook guide. Um, 
Note, we'll be using the very recently released Llama Index V.10, which if I go to this blog post, uh, we released this on uh, Monday, February 12th. Um, and so what we did was we really um, packaged uh, just the core modules and Llama Index Core and split off every other integration into separate packages. Um, and so we did this work to try to make every single integration and um, within the repo uh, well maintained, versioned, uh, and independently updated. So that um, this makes it that makes the dev UX a lot easier and should make the package less prone to breakages. Uh, this did lead to some changes in syntax, and I'll show you that updated syntax in the notebook walkthrough. So now let's walk through a notebook example of how to build an agent using our query pipeline syntax, specifically how to build a React agent. If the first two videos showed you how to build a DAG, here we'll build you know, a DAG, but actually plug it into an agent worker that will loop through this DAG and actually carry state through throughout. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna build a React agent from scratch, so not using any out-of-the-box modules, and using a SQL database tool. So this agent will learn how to, will, will given the task, uh, query a SQL database to give back the right result. So we're just gonna run through some imports and, and we'll use the Chinook database. Um, this is uh, a very popular sample database for testing you know, uh, SQL queries. And we'll import uh, the query pipeline. Uh, we'll be using the OpenAI LLMs. So we want to pip install Llama Index LLMs OpenAI. This is a V10 feature where you know the OpenAI integration um, has been split off, and so you want to pip install it. Um, the Llama Index package includes it by default, but this is good practice anyways. And this just downloads here. Here we'll just set up a global callback manager. Um, this will help in case you want to plug this into any downstream observability module. Now in this case, let's set up a text to SQL uh, query engine and tool. This is the core tool that the agent will use. And here we're not going to build this from scratch. We're just going to use the pre-existing query engine. But this uh, just takes in a natural language query um, and under the hood translate it and, and translates it into SQL. Um, executes it against a SQL database and gives you back the result. Uh, if you want to learn how to build this stuff from scratch and also make it more advanced, check out our second video uh, in, in our video series. Notice that we also wrap the SQL query engine in a query engine tool, and we give it a name called SQL tool. And then the description is useful for translating a natural language query into a SQL query. Uh, this is just basically some sort of prompting to help the agent use this tool and, and know when to use it. Great, so let's get to the fun part of setting up a React agent pipeline. So we'll set up a React pipeline um, to using our query pipeline syntax, and we'll both execute it step-by-step -step and also execute it end-to-end. -end. We're gonna use a few fun components, uh, like agent input component, as well as agent function component. Um, and some other components that aren't used in this notebook include like a custom agent component. Um, these are agent-specific components that can actually carry state um, and this is something that is important in building an agent because you want the state to propagate throughout the execution of an agent. Here, we'll just import the query pipeline. Um, notice that we define a blank query pipeline for now, and we'll add modules to it sequentially. And the first step is to define the agent input component. Um, and so the agent input component is something that's called at the beginning of every agent step. Um, and besides passing along the input, we'll do some sort of basic initialization and state modification. So scrolling down here, just moving past all the imports, here is our agent input component. Um, this is the class, and it takes in a function, agent input function. If you go to the agent input function, this is a user defined function, and it takes in two variables, a task and a state. The task is just an object that contains the overall task information. Um, so uh, basically, the way we think about it is when a user wants to execute a task against an agent, uh, the agent will create a task uh, containing a lot of the metadata. 
they can execute step by step to achieve that task and might take multiple steps to achieve the task. Um, so, th so this contains both the initial user input uh, memory as well as any kind of global state over time. This is state that's passed into the agent input function. At the very beginning of execution, this state will be empty. Um, throughout the course of execution, on subsequent steps, the state might not be empty. And you'll see that in the logic here. In the execution, we'll say, if current reasoning is not in state, then we'll initialize that in state. So on the first run, on the first step, this is true. And so we'll want to initialize it. On subsequent runs, current reasoning will be populated. And actually, we initialize current reasoning with an observation reasoning step. This is just a very light wrapper um, that's uh, a light internal abstraction uh, to just you know, contain the initial task input. So state current reasoning dot append reasoning step. The output of this is just um, a dictionary of input keys to inputs. You're really free to um, return whatever you want in this dictionary. In that sense, it's actually very similar to our in regular input component in a query pipeline. Um, and the main thing is you just got to make sure that whatever input you return, you can wire these inputs um, to the proper downstream modules throughout the rest of the query pipeline. So we did some basic initialization, which just amounted to putting the task uh, input in this query uh, current reasoning list. And then the next step is to define the agent prompt. Um, after you take in the input, uh, what we want to do is we want to call the LLM with the React prompt. Um, and so this module does that. We define what we call an agent function component. Um, an agent function component is similar to our default function component in our query pipelines, allowing you to pass in any arbitrary function, right? And the main difference here is that um, uh, the, the function component takes in a task, a state, and basically after that, it can take in any set of arguments that you want. So it's very similar to a function component where you can define an arbitrary function. Um, the main difference with the function component is that these two variables must be defined uh, in the first two slots. This is what allows you to propagate states um, uh, throughout the agent because it passes in both the task and state variable. So you can, again, modify the state throughout the course of execution if you want. So within the React prompt function, we call this uh, internal module called React Chat Formatter. Um, all it does is it has a little prompt template inside. And given the right set of inputs, it will return the fully formatted React prompt. So um, the input to this prompt function is uh, some input string, as well as a set of tools. Uh, we'll learn you know, how to wire in these inputs from the uh, agent input function in, in the next section. But given these inputs, um, It'll fill this in with the tools, chat history, current reasoning, and give you back a format of React run. And so we'll execute this, um, this module, but actually just to show you what the React formatter looks like with an empty chat history and current reasoning, uh, it looks something like this. Here is just the overall system prompt. Um, you're designed to help with a variety of tasks. Uh, you have access to a wide variety of tools. Really, because we pass in one tool, there's one tool passed here. And we see here is the name that we pass to this tool. Here is the description to this tool. And then here is the arguments needed for this tool. This is represented in the Pydantic schema. And we see it just takes in an input with type string. And here is a classic uh, React output format. You know, either return thought, action, action input, uh, or return thought, answer, if you're actually done. So. We're just telling the this this React prompt is just telling the LLM, you know, either call a tool or say that you're done and return the answer. Because we left the conversation uh, history as blank, you don't see the stuff below. But um, if the conversation history is not empty, then we actually interleave the user and assistant messages underneath here. Um, and so the input to the LLM is actually a list of chat messages with both the system prompt, but also interleaved user, uh, user assistant messages from previous combos. After calling the React prompt, uh, you're left with a choice because again, the React prompt uh, or the LLM can either do thought, action, action, input if it wants to call a tool, 
or say thought answer if it's done. Um, and here we'll show how to parse that output and basically kind of do an if else statement to send you know, the input down a separate path of this graph, depending on what uh, the output of the React prompt is. That is in what we call this React uh, parse React output function, um, where we define another agent function component to call uh, this, uh, again, this module called React output parser. All this does is parse that prompt here and parse it into a reasoning step. Um, this reasoning step is just an object that contains uh, is done property, um, as well as um, if you know this is the final answer, there'll be a response reasoning step. And if this is an intermediate answer, it'll be an action reasoning step. Um, so it returns this output in a dictionary. So whether or not it is done, whether or not the agent is done, and um, what the reasoning step is. We'll see below that we actually, given the output of this, uh, of this function, a do what we call a conditional path. So a conditional link to two different nodes. And so instead of sending this input to both nodes at once, we'll only do one or the other depending on the condition. And what this condition is, if this reasoning step is not done, it means that it wants to call a tool. And so we'll actually define a run tool function. Um, and this tool run tool function will take in this reasoning step, which is an action reasoning step. And this action reasoning step contains an action, action input. And we'll pass that to this tool runner component to just you know, call the tool with the action input, um, get back the output, and append that to the current reasoning. So this is the process of you know, processing the action inputs calling the tool um, and updating the conversation history. On the other hand, if the agent is actually done, we'll actually have a separate component where the response step is assumed to be a response reasoning step and we'll append it to the conversation history, um, but actually just append everything to the memory. Um, so there's like a special variable called memory uh, where um, this is just something that's maintained throughout the course of a task um, and actually of an entire agent and we append the entire conversation into the agent memory um, for use with the next uh, execution. Um, so memory persists across different tasks. Um, the conversation history is only for a given task. And so now that we're done, we just append everything to the memory and give back the final response. We have one last component, which, you know, depending on whether or not you call a tool um, or you're done um, and you wanna process the response, we just have a light converter that converts the response dictionary into a proper agent chat response. And so um, the final output of uh, a query pipeline within an agent is an agent chat response, um, as well as it is done flag. So we just described a bunch of these different modules and it's a, it makes sense if you know at this point you're wondering how does this actually all fit together? And so this is where we define the links between these different modules to uh, define this agent query pipeline. So we stitch together the top level agent pipeline um, with links. Um, so first we'll add all the modules to the query pipeline. The next step is to add the links. Um, so first we'll link the agent input to the React prompt to an LLM to the React output parser. This should be pretty straightforward, but basically you know, we take in everything um, or, or we, we uh, start off with the input components. We take the outputs of that agent input component, feed it to the React prompt, um, and, and then we take the output, you know, the formatted React prompt, send it to the LLM, get back the output, and then parse that output, again, into either a response reasoning step or an action reasoning step. Now we do something interesting, which is the conditional link part. We add a conditional link from React output to the tool call. So here we see the React output parser to the run tool component. And the condition function really is if that output of the React output parser is done variable is true uh, or, or is, is, is not true. If it's not true, then run tool, this link actually runs uh, and run tool runs with, with the reasoning step as input. There's another conditional link from the React output to the final response processing. And this is toggled if you know, the output of the output parser is done. So the opposite of this link. 
Um, if that is true, then we also pass in the input x reasoning step. So we see here it's really one or the other, right? Either run tool runs if it's uh, not done, or process response runs if it is done. Finally, uh, whether or not run tool runs or process response runs, um, we're going to add the link for both to process agent response. When you execute this DAG, uh, or you know, only one of these links will run at a time. But basically, both of these links will link to the same input key in process agent response. Um, and whichever one runs will feed it then to the process agent response to give you back, again, the final answer, which is an agent chat response. And it is done. So if we visualize this query pipeline, it looks something like this, right? Um, you have an agent input, feed it to the React prompt, LLM. Here's the output parser, which decides whether or not to run the tool or process the final response and give you back the answer. This is just uh, one step of execution, right? So on, on its own, it does not loop. Um, and, and so, you know, if we just execute this in one step uh, and, and uh, it'll, it'll give back an answer, um, but, you know, is done might be false. So this is just a special type of agent pipeline. And to really you know, take advantage of step-by-step -step reasoning and loops, what we want to do is set up an agent worker around this uh, text to SQL agent query pipeline. So now we want to set up an agent worker around this text to SQL query pipeline. Um, and what we do is we import these two modules, uh, query pipeline agent worker, as well as an agent runner. We wrap the query pipeline with the query pipeline agent worker, and then put the agent worker within the agent runner. This overall agent runner allows us to run this query pipeline either step by step or you know, in a full loop. And to clarify, running one step of this query pipeline means running uh, the entire DAG once. right? And so running multiple steps of this query pipeline means running the entire DAG multiple times. Every time we run the DAG, the state persists throughout the course of the run, so the state continuously gets modified until uh, is done is equal to true at the end. So let's run this, and then let's try running the agent on some sample queries. So we'll first create a task called what are some tracks from the artist ACDC, limit it to three. Right? We create this task and then call run step. We see that it's actually by running the step, it's uh, executing the entire DAG uh, on, on uh, you know, in the first step, and it runs through the modules agent input, then the React prompt, right? So it passes the input to the React prompt, calls the LLM, goes through the output parser. Um, you see that the input to the output parser actually is, you know, it basically infers um, call the SQL tool with the relevant input, select track name from tracks, or artist name is there. The output parser does its job. So you see the conditional link is actually working. It calls run tool next, and then process agent response. So the current output from this uh, agent is actually just the intermediate response, uh, where you know it's the observation step. We can show that here. Um, the step output has you know, an uh, observation. Um, the output is just the tool output. The top three tracks by ACDC are this. But of course, the agent isn't actually done with this task yet um, because you know is done should be equal to, to false. Let's just double check this really quick. All right, it's equal to false. So we rerun the step. Um, this current observation from the tool has been persisted to conversation memory, but once we rerun the step, um, we see it goes through the agent input, calls the React prompt again, of course, with the tool output in the conversation history. Now, when we go to the React output parser, we see that here the agent essentially has inferred that the user has already provided this information in the previous observation, so therefore we can give back an answer. So the conditional link now goes to process response instead of run tool because it has all the information. And now process agent response um, has a response string and is done is equal to true. So now when we go to is last, we see that the output is true and we just need to call agent.finalize response and then we get back the answer. 
So that's showing you the low-level agent API, actually, where you can execute things step by step until you're able to, um, uh, until it is done as true. This has certain benefits of one, debugging, interpretability, and also uh, in future videos, we'll show you how to, you know, actually inject user input in the middle of the state so that um, you can actually guide the agent as it's executing uh, the, the task. You can um, also just run everything end to end. So uh, by just calling agent.chat, you can just ask, you know, what are some tracks from the artist ACDC? We'll reset this so it re-executes the loop. Um, and you'll see it, it runs two steps at once. Step one, again, runs the tool uh, with the inferred action, goes back to the beginning of the DAG, runs the entire DAG again, and the second step goes to process response. And the response is the exact same. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully this gives you a flavor of how to compose your own agent pipelines with our query pipeline syntax and how to compose you know, agentic reasoning on top of any tools that you want. Um, we'll try to dig a little bit deeper into what agentic RAG means in future videos. So this includes you know, routing, uh, query decomposition, and of course, back to this like React agent loop as well. Uh, but hopefully this is a good start. So thanks and we'll see you next time.